it's really bright out here um which is why i've got this hat on to try and just sort of take some of the light off um my eyes i don't want to put my sunglasses on i find it really difficult if people talk to me and they've got sunglasses on so um i've taken them off um, we're back in um, a heat wave again, canny cool. So we're um, sitting indoors with the shutters at the front of the house closed. These ones are open. We're still getting light in from those. I'm tired. Um, I've been really carried away over the last few days um, planning, researching, looking for hotels looking at Canada, looking at the train journey on the Canadian, watching YouTube videos, warm myself out. Um, but it's been good. And um, I've got quite a lot of planning to do yet. Yeah, I need to find somebody to come and live here for a, for a month whilst we're away. And um, that's always a worry. It's always a worry trying to get somebody to you know, to be knowing that people are committing themselves. Um, because the worry for me is at the last minute they may not be able to come, and nobody knows, do they? Nobody knows what their future is, so the last minute they may not be able to come. So, I need to put all that in place. There's plenty of time, but at the same time, um, I'm looking at the tickets on the train. It's really noisy the road so the winds coming from that direction um, I'm looking at the tickets on the train and I look at dates and they're sold out and I'm starting to worry about that it shouldn't really be I was talking to um, a, a young friend of mine in the UK and um, she was talking about how expensive everything is every time she walks out the door now which I, I find really worrying I mean you know um, she said that she went out shopping um, the other day and spent 120 quid um, and she's just living on her own and, and we I shopped the other day and spent 120 euros for the two of us and I don't budget um, so I could probably do it for less but I find it quite worrying she has um, uh, and already already a debt on her electricity account of quite a few hundred pounds and um, and she's not even reached winter yet you know winter hasn't arrived she works remotely um, so and she has student loans still so it's really quite worrying um, how people are going to manage this winter uh, it would have been really it was really noisy here yesterday late afternoon there was the the fete de battage here um, over in the village um, yesterday I, I haven't actually translated battage but it's it's all the old farm machinery and, and, and some sort of agricultural type thing it's it's not very big although they had quite a bit of parking put aside for it um but i'm looking over there i can see that bird's really going for it because it's quite windy out here today um the bird keeps getting twisted sadly but i can see it really swinging around out there yeah so it was quite noisy here yesterday in fact at one point um i thought there'd been an accident out there it was like so noisy but it would have been an old some sort of old farm implement being dragged along noisily along on a trailer um drought continues not had any rain no rain on the forecast i'm eking out water to anything that's in pots um, otherwise it's just dead and well it's not dead the grass always looks dead the you know i'm not going to call it a lawn because it's not what some people call a lawn but the area of grass that we have always looks dead in drought and then amazingly it comes back it's, it's quite shocking that it recovers every time um, so I'm not I'm not worried about it um, I'm not worried about anything I'm pleased really really pleased I planted nothing this year um, because it's it reduced it's reduced the anxiety 
it caused a lot of anxiety trying to work out how to um, I can't think of the word but work out how to water everything last year without taking water that was um, would not be depriving someone else of water and um, what I had forgotten and Mark um, brought it out and um, replenished the pond with it today is that we have a big I can't remember how many litre a big white tub that sits under the um, the the sh the chauffeau the chauffeau which is like an immersion heater and the chauffeau has a um overflow and that goes into this tub and this tub is really really big and i said to him i'd forgotten about that that would be really ideal when we're you know short of water he actually poured all, all of it into the pond um i think it's probably a good 50 liters 40 liters so that will be really useful if we reach a point of I need to be even more careful with water. Um, chickens. Chickens. We're always tired by the time we go down and lock them up. So we go in there and just, you know, and, and I've been leaving them until it's dark and just going in and shutting them in and haven't picked up the the pullets and I need to it's really difficult with them being black to be able to see what's happening to their feathers across their saddle um, so the neck feathers are a bit of a giveaway and the saddle feathers if they start creating long saddle feathers and, and every time I am around them and I try and I mean they keep moving but every time I look it's really difficult to tell but um, I'm really really suspecting they're hens which would be amazing absolutely amazing if they are but I probably um, find that they're not sadly which will be a shame um, so in my busy excited oh let's travel phase this last couple of days I booked us a trip to Normandy in September um, we did it several years ago we went up and stayed at Grand Con Maisy and um, Mark being um, a World War II um, buff I suppose wanted to visit various things various parts of Normandy obviously Omaha Utah um, can't remember the other two beaches and and all the the bunkers around there and the gun batteries and um, Aramanche and um, there's lots of museums there and I um, I really enjoyed it I enjoyed it because I looked at some of the museums with him did the bit that I wanted and then I just chauffeured him round and I had a really good book and I can't remember what I was reading but I was reading a really good book on my Kindle and, and sometimes the weather was a bit wet anyway because it's Normandy you can never know with the weather um, and I just sat and read my book whilst he was in a museum and I actually enjoyed that. Um, I want to, it's in, for me to do that sort of thing, <coughs> I want to be near the sea. So I had to have a good old look yesterday because I said to him, I don't want something that says it's got a sea view and the sea's off there in the, in the distance. I want the sea to be close. And I found somewhere yesterday that, that is practically on the beach and on and it but it's um it's got a balcony and you sit on the balcony and you're looking at over the over the sea and that will be you know that so I've booked that for us in September I think Mark was a bit knocked over by it but we have talked about going back to Normandy and um it took him a while to catch up so um and I've been looking at lots of things about packing and packing light and and how to manage your packing for you know for an aircraft you know you're limited on what you can take we're used to taking a bootload of stuff so we really are going to have to practice how we pack and I'll be able to do that for Normandy um, it's the same weight limit and baggage limit on the plane as it is on the train so that should make it easier anyway nothing really of note just me muddling along i'm going to go back in where it's cooler and um might have a look at the chickens tonight if i remember and try and um 
try and have a look and see if they are girls. I hope they are. We're getting no eggs at the moment. Nobody's laying any eggs. I think they're having time out in the in the heat wave, understandably. So have a good day, night, morning, week no, there won't be a weekend anywhere, will it? But whatever. Have a good one.